First of all, God is good. At all time. How many people have been on an airplane and we got up to use the restroom and it said occupied? How many of us have grabbed the door handle and tried it? Seriously? Well, uh, Thursday, I was uh, had the rare opportunity to go out and rake hay all day for a guy. I was working with a fella, uh, an over cowboy who had been, uh, I guess he's been a Christian since you know Moby Dick was a menna. But uh, I asked him why he didn't become a preacher because he's very outspoken about the Lord. And uh, he said, well, you're a preacher, ain't you? And it's the same thing he's asked me every time I went and hauled it and raked hay for him and stuff like that. You're a preacher, ain't you? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still doing it. He said, um, what was your take on the devil? <laughs> well, I'm not real fond of him, if that's what you're asking. He says, no, no, I was, I was wondering... Because uh, he said, I was talking to the Lord the other day, and he talked back to me. And uh, he said, uh, We went out there, and he said, Look at this, look at this hay pasture. It's a big old, I mean, there's probably 100 acres out there that, that, that was in, in hay. He said, uh, If we don't cut this, and we just let it go fallow. How long do you think it would be before you're not allowed to use it as a pasture, you know, hay, hay mat anymore? I'll tell you exactly how long. Two years. <laughs> because in two years, you're going to have some locust trees about that big around and cedar trees all up in it. You've got to go out there and chop them all down and then shred it for a couple of years and then you can use it for hay. Because that's, that's pretty good. Pretty good. So you can't use it as a hay meadow and a forest at the same time. No, no, I, I, I don't see how you could. It's all right, all right. He said, um, in the Bible, he said, I was reading, and I'm going to read to you here. It's in, in Matthew. I, I keep forgetting to give this to early, didn't I? It's in Matthew 12. Uh, we're going to start in about. Uh, 43. Matthew 12, 43. Yes, sir. I think it's the New Testament. As, as, as uh, I don't know who it was yesterday. We were talking to, to people about our church. And uh, he said, we preach all 66 books. He said, not just the New Testament, not just the Old Testament. We preach them all. I forget who it was that said that. I thought, that's, that's pretty good. Yes, sir, 1243. All right. So, Jesus was talking, and he had just got through uh, casting a demon out of somebody, out of a couple of fellas. And he's teaching them, and he said, when an evil spirit comes out of a man, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean, and put in order. Then it goes out and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that man is worse than the first. That's how this, uh, that's how it will be when this wicked generation with this chicken, wicked generation. Now, it goes on in Luke, and he said that, as he said that, a woman jumped up and said, blessed is the woman who gave you birth. He said, rather, blessed is the one who hears the name of the Lord and believes. So, I got to thinking about what he said. And then I got to reading on it. And just before that, I love this, he cast out demons, two demons, this is a, it's over in 22, he cast out demons out of two men, cast them into a herd of pigs. And everybody was astonished. 
Now this is where that occupied, unoccupied thing comes in. As soon as everybody was astonished, then the Pharisees said, hey, this has got to be bills of, I can't pronounce that, it's some demon. The prince of demons that only dry out, that only follows de uh, demons. Jesus knew their thoughts. He said, how can a house or a country that is divided stand? You can't do it. At another point in time, he told the folks, you can, you can only follow God or Satan. You can't follow two masters. And I can, I can attest to this. Because our dogs have one master, and they don't listen to a darn thing I say. <laughs> I'm the guy that buys the food. And, and, and I'm the guy that has to walk them sometimes. And they don't listen to nothing I say. But let my wife walk in and say, sit down, y'all. You know, I threaten them with a stick and threaten to cut their tongue out and everything else, and they still don't listen to me. But someone cannot follow two masters. That hayfield cannot be a hayfield and a Christmas tree, Christmas tree farm. It's impossible. I guess you can cut it in half, but then you're going to have two fields. So Jesus told them, you cannot stand divided. When a person says, I'm not going to do this bad stuff anymore. I'm going to stop all this mess. And in his mind, that demon leaves. How long is it? And then he straightens himself up. How long is it before that craving comes back? And it comes back and hits him harder than ever before. I know this because when I when I quit drinking, I, I'm an alcoholic. When I quit drinking, I was good for a day or two. <laughs> and first time I went out with the fellas, and 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 they're all cracking up beer, and 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 I'm sitting here. I've been sweating for half a day, and I'm thinking, man, I'd really like to punch you in the face and take that from you. But um, but the craving came back. Now, luckily, I had very good friends. I have good family that when I thought, maybe I'll have one, they punched me in the face and said, no, I don't think so. So, the thing is, we cannot keep our house clean. Uh, this is one for the ladies. Mostly ladies, guys too, sometimes. How often does your house stay clean? Three days. <laughs> is that how long he's been gone? PJ says her house can stay clean until I come in the door. And she can tell exactly what route I take. Because there's a shirt, there's pants, there's a sock, there's, you know all the way to go get some clean clothes or, and, and your hat except I, my hat is, is like goes here to there and I'm surprised I walked up here without it uh, and they say the test of a true cowboy is watching get dressed the cowboy dresses from the top down and yeah, that's true so anyway a house and, and I fully believe that a house should be able to clean itself because I believe it gets dirty by itself I do not help it one, one bit. But a house will not stay clean. How many people have rent houses or have bought a house and not moved into it? You get it all fixed up. It's pretty. It's nice. It's clean. Or a cabin out in the, in the boonies. You, you get it all nice and clean and set in, in order and you leave and you come back. What happens? I can tell you right now. The first thing that happens is a rat is going to chew a hole in the floor or in the wall and it's going to come in. Well, right after that's going to be a snake trying to get the rat. And then that rat's going to chew a bigger hole and get out because it's going to eat all your food stores. 
And then a coon's going to say, hey, what's this? Let me check this out. And he comes in. And pretty soon, you got a whole lot of squatters sitting in your house when you come back. Squirrels are living in your roof, and you got nuts all in your, in your air ducts. How many times have you ever had to clean them out of air? Yeah. We went up there here a while back, and we found them, where they tore the insulation away and trying to stuff nuts into the... The problem is they don't remember it, and they don't come back. So anyway, here we go. We've got a house. We built it. We've got it clean. We've got it in order, and it's ready to go. And stuff happens. People move in, or things move in, or uh, transients move in, kind of take up shop. You come, you kick them out, they come right back when you leave. And they don't take care of your house. Why do they have to take care of your house? It's not theirs, right? right. Kind of like me. It's my wife's house. Why do I have to take care of it? She don't like that either. All right, so here we go. So here we go. We are trying to keep our house clean. The only way you can do it is to occupy. God and Satan cannot be in the same place at the same time. They cannot occupy the same place. Now we're just talking about our mind right now. We're talking about our mind. If I want Satan to stay out of my mind, I've got to fill it up with something else. I got to occupy it because when Satan comes up and sees the little occupied sign, he's not going to try the door. Okay, some people do, but he won't because he, knew, he knows who's on the other side. So we fill it up with, with prayer, meditation, and in scripture. How do we do that? We read something, read a verse, just read one verse in the morning. And you think about that verse all day long, how it's fitting into your life. All right. And, and, and it was written thousands of years ago and it's relevant today. Nothing in this world cannot be found within the pages of this Bible. I promise you, it's been tried and it's been, and, and it's been proven to be wrong. The only thing, the only thing in this world that you're going to find in this Bible that is not true are the lies that try, they try to tell against Jesus Christ or against God. There are false gods that were, that were talked about in this Bible. They're not true. They're false. They're fake. But the truth in the Bible is each time they were talked about, they were put down. What's going on in your mind? Who is occupying your thoughts? Who is occupying your mind? Is your mind occupied with the things that, of this world? The things that, that you are inundated with every single day? You turn on the radio. You turn on the TV. You go to a movie. I don't know even of a Disney movie anymore that's not rated PG. You cannot do anything in this world that sin is not in your face. So how do you occupy your mind? And I've preached once before, you can live in this world, but you don't have to be of this world. You occupy it with things that are of God. I'm a preacher, you're judging. No, I'm not judging. I'm using the discernment that God has given me. If we have a... a if we have a child who goes out and starts getting on drugs and we tell this child, stop! Then people are not any good. You're going to get yourself in trouble. Well, you're judging them. No, I'm not. That's called discernment. I'm protecting you. God has given us, through this Holy Spirit, the discernment to know right or wrong. We cannot live for God or live for the devil and worship God. It's impossible. Is your mind occupied? Is your heart occupied? Is your soul occupied? And the only way to keep the devil out of you, as Christ said, 
is to me to live in Him and Him in me. There's something else. We were looking at that hay field and I thought about something. A few days ago, that field was cut. And there was a lot of grass laying on the ground. For that long. And it was laying on the ground. Dead. All that grass was dead. But without that dead grass, this winter, that rancher's cattle and horses will die. It took death to give them life. Today, we have a Savior. He was cut down, hung on a cross, and He died. And without that death, our soul will die. It, take, it took Christ's death to give us eternal life. What does he ask in return? Just believe. John 3.16, everybody knows that one. God loved the world so much He gave His only Son that if you believe in Him, you will have eternal life. You will not perish, but have eternal life. If you just believe. Now, saying I believe is a whole lot different than saying than, than, than truly believe, as I told my kids growing up. But I'm sorry, Dad. Now, are you sorry you got caught? Are you saying I'm sorry to appease me? Or did you, or do you actually feel remorse for what you did? God can tell the difference. If you truly believe, if you truly believe that Jesus Christ came into the world lived a perfect life, died on the cross for our sins, three days was risen, and lives today and is coming back. If you believe, and nothing can sway that belief, you can have eternal life. And you will not perish in hell's fire. Is your mind occupied with God or the devil. This morning, read that man. The man I was sitting with was reading, was reading Psalms, and, and and you can't go wrong there. Start off in Psalms if you want to. If you like the poetry, if you like love stories, go to the Song of Solomon and and, and start there. If you like action, go to Kings. Go to Judges. There's nothing in this book you can't find. Romance, action, poetry. You like tragedy? Go to the, go to the uh, Lamentations. There's nothing you can't find. But when you read, read, meditate, in other words, think about it. Think about it through your day. I promise you, when you, when you, when you read the Bible, and, and, and you read the Bible and it says, God says uh, in those days the, the love of many will wax cold when he was talking about the, the, the end of times the love of many will, will, will be cold you go through your day you'll see it look around you'll see it when you read in the Bible when Christ said in those days the 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 old men will dream dreams and the young men will prophesy. You walk around, you'll see it. You'll see it, I promise you. But if our mind is not occupied with God throughout the day, how can we say we serve Him? My dad called them Sunday morning Christians because we saw them through the week. Uh, Dad would drive a, a RC Cola truck, and he would frequent all these places that, that the people worked at or, or, or you know, frequented, frequented themselves. And he saw them. And then he'd come to church, and they're talking about how their life was full, full, full of God all week. Which God? 
Is that a big G or a little G? Because when people see you, they're seeing who you serve. Occupy your mind. The first step in that is accepting Christ as your Savior. It's a simple, short prayer. Simple, short prayer. You can't buy it. You can't work for it. You can't even steal it. All you can do is accept it. I'm going to lead you in that prayer. Follow me. Lord, Lord, I've been out here and I've occupied my mind and my body with things that are against Your rules. Lord, I know that I can't live up to them and I can't clean my house and keep it clean. Lord, I need You. I need You in me and I need to be in You. I confess Christ as my Savior because I know that He died on the cross for me. He arose and He's living with You and He's coming back. I ask You to fill me up with Your Holy Spirit and the sin out of my heart and my mind. I ask the saints in Your name. Amen. That's the most important thing you can do.